Hello everyone, uh, this is Richard Symes with my missionary update from January 1st to January 27th. Uh, some of my videos and my missionary uh, letters are longer than others sometimes, you know, things are pretty straightforward. I'm just preaching in the schools, uh, so many people are hearing the gospel, so many people are getting saved. Uh, but this week, for example, it was a very exciting week. We had, a, we had just all kinds of things going on. I, it was a real adventure. We went on a mission trip to a place called Kati Il. And I'm, I'm just going to break up this uh, update into three parts, th this adventure into three parts. Uh, the trip there, uh, preaching the gospel, and the sites. But on the trip there, basically, it's, it's about four hours from Panabo, which is near where I stay. But we were driving to this place, Kati Il, in eastern Mindanao. And we stopped in the middle of nowhere to, uh, to get something to eat. And first off, someone from our church sees us there and stops by and starts talking to us, which is kind of crazy. We saw him there. We're in the middle of nowhere. And then on top of that, after that, we, some American comes and starts talking to us out in the middle of nowhere. And Americans are pretty rare in Mindanao, especially where we're at. And Corbin even asked this American if he knew for sure he was going to heaven, and he said he was 100% sure he was going to hell. So I think there's a possibility this guy might have been a reprobate. But then, once, right whenever we left that same place, we saw a truck tangled up with like a, a carabao harness. And a carabao is a water buffalo, and a carabao was on the, the harness. Okay, So this truck was basically tangled up with a carabao, a water buffalo. So all three of those things just happen basically within like 30 minutes of each other, same basic place, and that was all on the way to Kati Il. And then once we got there, the pastor that had invited us, invited us there, like he had all these appointments set up for us. Like we didn't even have to like go in the schools and set up any appointments. He just had all these things set up for us. Um, the first thing we did was we preached to some barangay officials. And we preached to them in a building that was like scarred uh, and peppered with bullet holes from where there was a fight with the MPA four years before. And then after that, we did preach in two schools. Corbin preached uh, at the Wednesday night church service. Then I preached at a cottage prayer meeting, which basically it's basically like a church service in someone's house. And this house was out in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of nowhere. It was dark even inside the house. But it was very interesting. We had some, uh, we had some native chicken, uh, a lot of, I think, just organic food. But it, it was just quite the situation out in the middle of nowhere. They even spoke, you know, a different language in this place we were at. But you know, they let me preach. I just preached the gospel because I don't, I didn't know what those people believed, and that's what the pr pastor wanted me to preach anyway. But it, it was just weird. It was in this wooden house. It was mostly dark. And there were like 20 people in there. But on top of that, uh, we preached to the military. And then we also preached on a radio station. Okay, we had no idea that we were doing any of these things except, you know, speaking in schools before we got there. But the evening of, of the first day that we got there, we were told that, you know, we were going to be speaking on the radio at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, so Corbin and I went there uh, early in the morning. We we gave a soul-winning demonstration on the radio, so hopefully some people believe that and they got saved. And then we still had some more time whenever we finished that. And like they were playing a song or something, so we were off the air for a second. And Corbin was joking about talking about the LGBT. And the radio host told us to do it. So we got up there and we started talking about LGBT. Uh, we didn't hold anything back. We told it like it was. And apparently the guy, the, the radio host, didn't have a problem with it because he invited us back the next morning. The next morning he invited us there at 5.45 a.m. To, to speak on the radio station again. And this time we just talked about you know what it's like being a missionary in the Philippines, why the Philippines is a good place to be a missionary. And I don't have that on my phone, but I think Corbin's going to upload that later. I don't think he has video, but he does have the audio for that. Both of our phones were running low on battery and storage while we were there, so we got, you know, we got some stuff, but not everything. And then the sites, um, I got to see the Pacific Ocean, or, or be on the Pacific Ocean at least for the first time that I'm that I can recall. Um, we got to see that there, and then we got to walk across an Indiana Jones-style hanging bridge. 
Uh, you know, it swings back and forth whenever you walk on it, so that, that was really cool. But it, it was a great trip. Um, and on top of that, the most important thing, we witnessed to 1,092 people and we counted 104 salvations. So uh, this was awesome. And I think Corbin and I, uh, you know, we want to go back. Corbin's actually moving back to the United States at the end of February. So we're hoping to plan a trip back to Kati'il maybe right before that. So God bless everyone. Until next week, thank you.